can't go on this, can it? It cannot go on. It can go on. Um, Eric Ten Hag is the great survivor. Uh, he's been the United manager, I think, for two full seasons. I think he's lost something like 30, 34 games and he's still got his job. I think the main reason he's got his job is because he won two trophies. They weren't the main trophies, the title or the European Cup, but he won the FA Cup and the Carabao Cup as well. I think that is why the reason, that is the reason why he's still got a job. And he survived some really shocking performances and results. The infamous, infamous losing 7-0 to Liverpool at Anfield. Uh, he survived that. Just four days later, uh, they beat Raul Betis 4-1. So I think in the short term, United are backing him. But if United keep playing the way they did uh, against Spurs yesterday, because to my eyes, you know, it didn't really look like, especially in the first half, that the players were playing uh, for the manager. Unless he sorts that out, then he knows himself that he's under pressure and he's under serious pressure of losing his job because performances like that are totally unacceptable. Right. You just said to me he kept his job because he won the FA Cup final. He beat a Manchester City side. Do questions not need to be asked from the football hierarchy that they've kept him in a job, given how dreadful United were last season, on the basis of one game of football? Well, I think what um, Ineos would say is that it wasn't on the basis of one game of football. They would say that, OK, it was a very disappointing season. We finished eighth, but we won the FA Cup. After the FA Cup, we carried out a review. Uh, and during that review, we decided that Eric Ten Hag was the best man for the job and he was going to get a contract extension. Of course, depending on who you speak to, there's the other side to the story. And the other side to the story is that they went out and spoke to lots of different candidates. Everybody knows who they are. I don't need to go through all the names. And for whatever reason, they couldn't agree a deal with one of the other candidates. So they went back to Eric Ten Hag. They went out, flew to Ibiza, interrupted his summer holiday, sat down, spoke with him and said, Eric, you know what? Actually, you are the man. This is the plan for the future. We're going to make some changes. You're going to get some new assistant managers. We're going to give you more money to spend uh, in the summer. There was going to be a reboot. Now, six games into, six, seven games into the season, the reboot doesn't appear to be working. But to be fair to Ineos, I don't think they judged Eric Ten Hag on just that FA Cup final win against City. Right, but they did go and speak to a load of other managers, as you've just said. Does that mean they have actually missed out on some viable options? Well, who were they speaking to uh, in the summer? Who are they considering? Uh, OK, Thomas Tuchel is still available. Maurizio Pochettino has got a job now. Roberto De Zerbi has got a job now. Thomas Frank is still at Brentford. Uh, the one name they were linked with in the summer who's now available, who wasn't then, is Gareth Southgate. We know he's got close links with Dan Ashworth. He's got close links with Dave Brailsford as well. I think it would be a big, big story if he was ever to become the United manager. I'm not sure whether some United fans would accept him being their manager. It would be a difficult sell to them. But I just sense at the moment we're talking about Eric Ten Hag's future when he's still got a job. Normally, we don't like talking uh, about managers' future and speculating on where they're going to keep their job or lose the job. But I think in this instance, it's a little bit different because Eric Ten Hag himself, in the summer, he sat down with the Dutch broadcaster and said, I am well aware of the fact that United have been speaking to other managers. It's not the done thing in the Netherlands, but it appears to be in England. They've gone out and spoken to other coaches when they already have a coach. So we know that United were speaking to uh, other potential replacements in the summer. And of course, if this run continues, like all big clubs, they have a succession plan in place. They will be prepared for the eventuality that Eric Ten Hag could leave. But I just want to finish off by making the point, Eric Ten Hag is the great survivor. We've been here with him before. He's been in the spotlight. Everyone's talking about his future. Everyone's saying it's unacceptable. This can't go on. But every time, somehow, he seems to get a few results or performances out of the players. And this saga continues.
does indeed. Carve Solicola, Chief Reporter, thank you.